Hey, this is Seth with In Demand Career. I show people how to get life-changing jobs in digital marketing with no previous experience or education. And that includes my very special guest today, Scott, who had a lot of education. He had a bachelor's degree in criminal justice and a master's degree in business, but could not find meaningful work until he found my course. He took the course, learned digital marketing skills, hustled very hard, got a $47,000 a year remote job, which he has now leveled up to a $65,000 a year remote job. He travels while he works. He loves his new career. I'm very excited to share his story with you. Thanks for being here, Scott. Yeah, yeah, it's great to be here, Seth. Thanks for having me. My pleasure. So why don't you tell people a little bit about your current job that you're doing right now? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so my current job, I work for Victory, and they're a recruiting company that specializes in connecting military veterans with potential employers and uh, educational institutions. But uh, in addition to that, they also have social media, they have a blog, they have uh, a magazine and print articles. And I work for the agency side, and typically a lot of our ads, it'll be a lot of um, PPC and also social media ads, whether it be on Facebook or LinkedIn. Typically, our ads will be about um, employment. So uh, we'll have an educational institution or a college will come to us and say, hey, we want to increase the amount of veteran students we have, or it'll be a private company and they'll say, hey, we want more veteran employees or employees with military experience or a military background. So that's my current position. That's great. And uh, that's very interesting. We'll see in a moment when we talk about your background, you know, with your interest in the military um, and tell people a little about like, you know, what's your what are you making? Do you enjoy the job and what's kind of the lifestyle like at this job? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love what I do. Uh, currently, I'm making sixty five thousand dollars a year and I only had one year of experience when I got this job. So it's definitely uh, very doable. It's fully remote and uh, I love it because um there's times where I get to work and see my family at the same time. So uh, I live in a different state and I have a lot of family and friends who live in different states. So it's very nice to work remotely and have that flexibility. So Scott, do you feel that you need to hide your location from your employers while you are traveling? No, Seth, absolutely not. Uh, I've had a conversation with my manager about it. And she said, as long as uh, you're keeping on the down low, you look like you're working in an office setting, as long as your camera is on and you're not at the beach sipping margaritas, She's perfectly fine with it. I'm not entirely sure uh, what other agencies or other companies are like and what their policy is. Everyone's different. But I would say in general, there's no need to hide where your location, your manager, your boss, they have a lot of other problems to worry about. So I wouldn't worry about it. Yeah, absolutely, man. I mean, as I said, as long as, you know, when, you, when you're working remotely, people's connection to you is through these Zoom calls. And so as long as you're like where you are right now, I don't know where you are. You know, you could be, in North Dakota, you could be in Costa Rica. It's it's an office. It's a room, white room. Um, you have good internet connection. I can see your face and they're going to be looking at your, you know, the work you're doing is the most important thing. But I think the great thing is, again, when you have uh, a, a skill set like this that's valued and a good relationship with your manager, you can be open about this. Again, you don't broadcast it. You don't go, hey, guys, I'm in Mexico or something like that. But you uh, don't, you know, also have, you don't have to hide it. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, there's been a couple of times where I've taken my laptop to uh, other states. So I have a lot of friends and family who live out of state. So uh, once in a while I'll go and uh, take an afternoon or nighttime flight, and then I'll wake up in a different state and then I'll take my laptop with me and then I'll work in a different state. And, you know, it's business as usual. I get my work done. Uh, I could get it done anywhere that I want. As long as you're staying productive and you're getting all your work done, you don't have anything to worry about. Do you Have you traveled internationally or do you have any plans to? And do you think that would be an issue? Uh, aside from Canada, uh, I haven't gone like too far away. But, you know, if I wanted to be in, you know, Australia or New Zealand, I would have to change my sleep schedule, but I could probably pull it off. Absolutely. It's true. I mean, that's the, the big issue with living here in Southeast Asia. It's like 12 hour, 13 hour time difference. Australia, it's even worse. And that's the main issue. But again, if you're showing up uh, on the Zoom call prepared for work, you know, it's cool. The company, you know, they want you to just get your work done and be productive. And that's the main thing. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Just get your work done. You don't want to have anything to worry about. It's really great, you know, where you are now, but what was going on in your life when you first found my course uh, before you knew about digital marketing skills? Yeah, yeah, I would. So um, I'll try to make the condensed version of my story. So uh, I graduated in 2014. That's when I graduated high school and I really wanted to work in the law enforcement field. So I decided to go to college and I studied criminal justice. So I did 
two years of community college and I transferred to a smaller public university, got my bachelor's in criminal justice in 2018. And then from there, I started working a lot of data entry positions, just whatever jobs I could get. And I wasn't able to find any kind of law enforcement or police job uh, in the state of New Jersey. It's very competitive. That's where I grew up. So um, at the same exact time, I was I also decided to go back to school. And I said, you know, if I can't get any kind of like law enforcement job or police job, I decided, you know, what, I'm just going to go into the business world. So I doubled down on my education and I went back to school. So I enrolled for a master's degree program. Uh, fully online, and I studied business there. So I was going for an MBA. And two years goes by, I graduate in 2020. And I still, I was still at the point where I was still doing a lot of data entry positions, just making enough to get by, but really nothing really sustainable. Uh, I really didn't have any reputable skills that really made me stand out. So I was really looking for another way that I could possibly, is, is there another skill set that I could possibly learn? Is there a certification I could go? So I was really just kind of uh, in a place where I really wasn't getting a lot of traction. And I needed to make a change. Yeah, I totally, I identify with that, man. I also did data entry work when I had come out of college with my fancy degree and couldn't find a job because I mean, if you're decent at typing and you have half a brain, you can, you know, type stuff into a computer. Um you know, it can be better than waiting tables, but, uh, you know, it's really not meaningful and it's very tedious work. Um, and, it, you know, of course, it's got to be frustrating if you, you have all this education and you're still these are the types of jobs you're getting. So, um, you know, how did how did you find the course? And then, you know, what happened when you started taking the course? Yeah, I found the course through Aaron Clary. And if you know Aaron Clary, you know, he's not a big fan of college. But um, so he was doing a, a live stream with a few other influencers and he mentioned your course on one of his videos. And I'm like, wow, like this guy helps people find marketing jobs. I should really check it out. And uh, I found out more about you and what you did and your program and your course. And I decided, you know what, I'm just going to go ahead and sign up for this and enroll in this. I, I knew a little bit about Facebook ads back then, but I didn't really know you can make a career out of it until I took your course and then it started to make a lot of sense. Awesome. Yeah. It's nice to hear. Yeah. He, he just still, still promotes it. Um, and it's great to hear, uh, you know, that, that, that moment when he mentioned it, you know, made such a difference for you. Uh, so, you know, so what happened when you started taking the course, you know, and, you know, did you do all the assignments, you know, um, you know, how did you get to, from taking the course to that first job? Yeah. Yeah. So I started taking your course in late 2021 and I spent a good month or two on the course. And then in March of 2022, I started applying for jobs. And eventually, I got an internship. So I started that internship in March of 2022. And then a couple of weeks later, I was still applying for jobs. And then I got my first marketing job in April 2022. So in less than four months, or roughly four months or so, that's when I got my first job. So it was very, very quick for me. That's awesome, man. And what, um, you know, what, uh, what was the internship in? And did that give you the confidence, you know, as you move towards getting that first job? Yeah, yeah. The internship was definitely very hands-on. It was a general agency. So they had a lot of clients, whether it be in tourism or they were selling products. And it was a lot of, um, they had both, uh, social media ads and they also had PPC. So I was managing a lot of their search and display campaigns. And my first job at Gate One, I was managing their search and also their retargeting campaigns on Google's display network and on Facebook. That's great. And what uh yeah, so as we keep you, you keep saying social media and I, I start to go, uh oh, because you know I talk about how just organic social media jobs, social media management is not a high income skill. It is not yeah. in demand, but social media ads. Facebook ads, Instagram ads. This is where companies are paying because that actually leads to, you know, customers, leads and sales. Um, so you had that, you know, confidence and experience from the internship. But like what what happened when you got into the, uh, that interview for the job you eventually got? Like, you know, you, you'd done everything in the course. You had very minimal experience. You had all this background with the, the you know, criminal justice degree. Um, you know, what happened in the interview? What kind of questions did they ask you? Mm -hmm. Like, how did it go? Yeah. Yeah, I put my internship in my resume. So I was doing the internship for about three weeks. I put the internship as experience in my resume. 
And I also put in a lot of the projects such as the uh, PPC spreadsheet that you gave us and also uh, a little bit of SEO. So I did a SEO site audit and that job was a combination of everything. They wanted someone who had a year or maybe two years of experience and it was a fully in-house position. And uh, a lot of those projects really helped me. But also even like the interview portion of the course where you can kind of just talk your way through the interview and uh, not like oversell yourself, but you also can say like, hey, like I have a lot of uh, knowledge in that certain area. Like maybe I haven't gone like all there, but uh, the interview portion of the course, I'm like, uh, that was a really, really important part of the course because it, it ran me through a lot of questions that I expected on the interview and I was much more prepared after knowing those answers. That's great. Yeah. And, um, and so, yeah. So how did that actual interview go? Uh, it was almost two years ago now, but from what I remember, uh, it was pretty straightforward. Uh, they said like, Hey, we like your background. We like your experience. You've done a lot of these projects. Um, in addition to you know, the projects that uh, we would do here, the PPC spreadsheet, I ran a couple of ad campaigns using my own money and just driving traffic to a fake website that I created. So I showed them these projects that I've been doing. And based off the projects alone, they were pretty much sold. They said, hey, Scott knows what he's doing. And even though he hasn't worked for uh, an agency or he hasn't worked in an in-house marketing position, he still spent some of his own money and did his own projects. And based off of the project, he knows what he's talking about. So he's definitely the right guy for us. That's it, guys. He, I I didn't prep him to say that. This is exactly- he did not. <laughs> In the course is, you know, when I got my first agency job, I had only run ads to my own website. People ask me, is that enough? It is. It is not for every job. I mean, if they had said, hey, we need someone that has a million dollars a year as, you know, experience, that's, you're not going to get that job. But there's so many of these jobs where the, the company is just looking at that, you know, basic level, foundational level of understanding and pro proper account structure, some experience. And, you know, then you got the position and then making 47K in, a, in an entry level position is, is perfect. That's the perfect entry level. You know, it's not where you're going to end up. Um, it's it's a it's a respectable amount of money. You're still learning. You're just beginning your career. And um, and it sounds like you were able to level up pretty quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And 47K was more than I made in any other position. So that sounded pretty good. And I knew that over time, the more and more experience I get, the higher the salary is going to be. And I was very patient. I understood that, you know, it's the, the money's not going to be like that good up front or within the first or second year. But again, like you're still making enough to support yourself as long as you live below your means, you're still going to be okay. So for me, I was very, very happy with that because I knew that this is the start of my career. And it's only going to get better from here. Absolutely. And even as you said, it was more, I've heard that from like three different people now. I had someone who's working in shipping. I had someone who had 20 years at a, another job in a different industry, and they had never, their, their first job in digital marketing is more than it ever made in their previous career. And that's just the beginning. Uh, but, um, you know, how, how did it go from, the, so you, you know, I always tell, and I tell people, you know, it'll take one year to get to 60K. That's the most common thing. And this is what happened for you. You got to 65K. How did you end up getting this new position that you're in right now? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So at the time I decided I was going to move out of New Jersey and move to Oklahoma City and my current company, they couldn't keep me around because to work in their marketing department, you had to be either in New Jersey or Pennsylvania. Uh, fun fact. So they were actually only hiring in the state of Pennsylvania for the marketing department because everyone in the marketing department, it was a fully remote job, but the rule was you had to be in Pennsylvania. But because I was the only one who had experience in digital marketing and uh, they were getting a lot of applicants and a lot of them were Pennsylvania, but not a lot of them had the experience. Whereas I had the experience and I was from New Jersey. So they made an exception for New Jersey, but they weren't willing to make an exception when I moved to Oklahoma City. So I said, like, we understand, you know, you can move, but you know, we're not going to be able to keep you around. And at that point I was okay because I decided I think it would be better if I worked for an agency. Uh Gate One was very good, like very good first job. It was in-house. Uh, I learned a lot, but uh, I really wanted to work for an agency anyway. And then I uh, found this position at Victory and I've been there ever since. So I started working for them in April of last year, 2023. So, and um, like, I, I love Victory. Um, I'm not only making more, but I'm also, uh, it's fully remote. And, you know, if I want to see my family back home or if I want to go to a different state, they're okay with me, you know, 
picking up and working in another location as long as I'm getting my work done. Yeah, yeah. I want to talk more about that in a second. But your first company, by the way, guys, just in-house versus agency. In-house means you're working for like one company, like a private company. Agency means you're working for multiple clients. Um, and uh, you, but you said you said the first position you had was remote, but you had to live within a certain state. Correct. Right. Um, and it, I like that you pointed out that yeah, they did make an exception. Um, you know, New Jersey versus Pennsylvania, because this is, but this is what I encourage you guys to understand about even these positions that say you have to live here or, you know, it's not remote. These companies are going to have to make concessions because they cannot find people who have these skills. If you're hiring and you have like, you know, money that's being spent by your clients, you need someone to manage it. You're going to have, it's going to push them up against the wall. You have leverage and say, I have the skills, but I don't want to live in, you know, New Jersey uh, or Pennsylvania or whatever state, um, or, or I don't want to, you know, work in-house, I want to work remote, you have the ability to negotiate those types of things. Not with every company. So this company wasn't willing to let you move around. And what I say, and I made him another video about this, I said, that's perfect. That's fine. You you were honest about it. You you said, fine, I'm going to get a better job. And you got a better job. You didn't say, oh, God, I, you know, oh, I don't want to lose my job. So I'm going to, you know, sacrifice my lifestyle and, my, you know, what I want in my life. You, you moved on and you got a better company that allows you to move around. So, uh, I want to talk about that for one second because people do always want to know, you know, what's it like to travel while you're working? What's it, you know, you you told me you've traveled quite a bit while you've had this job. What's that been like? Yeah, it's been pretty cool. So typically what I'll do is uh, I'll take one day where, uh, let's just say I'll end work on Friday. I'll take PTO on Friday and then I'll go somewhere Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, there's times where I'll land somewhere. I'll take a late flight in a late afternoon. It'll be a 6 or 7 p.m. flight uh, anytime after I get off and then I'll land in a different state and then I'll take my laptop with me and then I'll just start working there. As long as I'm in a nice quiet space, I can get my work done. And and I've done that quite a bit in uh, both jobs, actually. Yeah. And they and I was, you know, did they say anything to you explicitly about where you can go or are they just, you know, sort of just, hey, just be professional and get your work done? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, my manager is really cool about that. She said, you know, as long as you're not sipping margaritas on the beach and we can't see that like you're on vacation or anything like that it's cool but if you keep it on the down low you work in a nice quiet office setting uh, it, it's no big deal as long as you're getting your work done it's okay with us that's but, it guys uh, this is this is perfect because you know i made this i just uh made that video about you know should you hide your location from your boss and i'd say get into a field get skill sets that are valued where you're being paid well and respected and you don't have to hide you know and i also said you know you don't you don't have to, you know, you know, broadcast it either. You'd be like, hey, guys, I'm moving around. It's like literally nobody cares. If you, if, all they see you is on the Zoom call. Um, and if you're in a nice office or a nice house or something, you have a good, strong Internet connection, you're doing your work. There are places like this all over the country, all over the world. You just have to make sure like that you have the good Internet connection. That's your responsibility. Mm -hmm. So so that's that sounds that sounds pretty cool. And right now you said, yeah, you're you're uh you're in New Jersey right now, but you live in Oklahoma City and you're still working. Yeah. What did your family or friends think about this big shift that you had in your life? You know, you were heading towards law enforcement, then you got a master's degree. Did your parents or anybody say anything? And, you know, when you made the shift and took this online course, did they have a response when you got the job? What did they think? Yeah, they were actually really happy. I, I don't think a lot of uh, people in my family were really too pumped about me getting into law enforcement. And they really, really like what I do right now because I tell them all about what I do, uh, about how I manage Facebook and LinkedIn ads, and also like working on the PPC side. And, and they say, hey, like you're in a great career field. We love that, you know, you can work remotely, you can be here and you can see family, you can see friends. Uh, you're much more flexible now, but at the same time, like you're doing something that's really meaningful. Uh, you're helping businesses get more traffic and uh, more revenue. So like your, your skill is great. And uh, I think if it was around when they were growing up, they definitely would have gotten into this field as well. That's what they always tell me. Oh, that's great, man. It's nice to hear when like families are supportive, you know, and sometimes families are a little resistant initially, especially if somebody's invested in education, but they always come around once you get that job. And, you know, obviously they're happy that you can actually visit them. You're not stuck, you know, across the country. So, so that's really great. Um, but listen, man, I'm really happy for you. I want to thank you for sharing your story with everybody. Can people reach out to you on LinkedIn if they have any questions? 
Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Anyone who's taking the course right now, feel free to reach out to me. Just uh, you can look me up in LinkedIn. I'm sure uh, Seth will put my LinkedIn profile in the description. Yeah, go ahead, reach out to me if you guys have any questions, comments, concerns. Uh, I'm a very big proponent of Seth's course. I've actually recommended his course to a couple of my friends who are also stuck doing data entry positions. So yeah, guys, uh, feel free to reach out to me. Uh, Seth, you have a great course. Uh, I really appreciate you changing people's lives and getting people marketable skills that they can take to the market. So uh, really special thanks to Seth. He's the guy who's putting it all together. Well, I appreciate that, man. Uh, yeah, well, I think you said it. I think you summed it up pretty good. I usually ask people, you know, I ask the people I'm interviewing if they have anything they want to say to people watching, but I, I think you already said it. So, so uh, yeah, yeah, man. I'm really happy for you, you know, and I'm excited that you've already leveled up to this salary and that you're just starting out and that you have this flex flexibility and ability to travel. Um, so, yeah, just keep at it. And, you know, thanks for the chat and we'll keep in touch. Yeah, definitely. So thanks for having me.